What's up? It's J Flip and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. What's up, guys? Rob here, Front Row Live Entertainment. I'm reunited with G Flip and I'm so excited. First of all, day two of this U.S. North American tour. Yeah. Headline tour. Congratulations. Yes. Uh, and it looks like most of those dates have been sold out. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, and I'm just so stoked to do my first ever headline tour in the U.S. Like, I've never That's done, you know, a full traveling around, seeing weird American cities <laughs> and going places. So, yeah, we're on show two tonight, but I'm very excited for the, the weeks ahead. And I love that you get uh, different tastes of different venues. Like, you'll have one smaller venue, then you'll have a bigger venue. Like, it kind of changes. I'm sure that kind of impacts the way that that performance or, or the way that you learn how to basically, like, take over the stage every single time. Yeah, I think venues have a lot to do with, you know, your performance, your vibe. You know, sometimes when it's a smaller, packed show, it's a bit more rowdy and... Sometimes when it's a bigger venue, there's more space for me to run around. Yeah. I also think the the different environments cause things to sound different. Like right now, uh, where we're at at the Glass House, the kit sounds way better than the venue yesterday, mm. which I'll probably lay into it a little bit more yeah. or, you know, have a bit more fun improvising, you know. So it's always different depending on the the – venue and how it sounds and the acoustics and stuff it's always different i think you'll love this venue i i used to love coming to shows to this venue i mean i would still come to shows here but like i used to come here like almost every week oh really um and i would love the way that it sounded here so i feel like dope. you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it tonight dope um let's jump in and talk about this album drummer because it is like from front to back it's a masterpiece oh, i cannot um i can like it's hard for me not to put every single thing on repeat on this album. Oh, thanks, and mate. I feel like it. You've, you've, you know, this album was. I know it took like three to four years to make, but I feel like during mm -hmm. that time you kind of just rediscovered yourself, not just personally, mm -hmm. but also as an artist, like who you really are. Yeah. Talk to me about like the trials and tribulations, I guess, that you kind of dealt with in order to get to this album. Yeah, I think it was during. But I had so much time, like we all did, to just like reflect and think mm -hmm. a lot. And I was thinking about the music I'm making and producing and I realized like the environments that I was put in just weren't, you know, met, like weren't creating the music that I wanted to create. Like put it, being put into like this pop machine, you know, here in LA where you just go meet a producer <laughs> and like you just create a song like that. It's just not my vibe. And um, no one had drum kits and drum kits my main instrument I've – played drums since I was nine I was sessioning for a while I was playing in multiple bands in my career and I was a wedding drummer at one stage like drums were my be all and end all I didn't start singing till I was like 20 so no one knew I could even sing I didn't even really know I could sing to be honest um so I just you know in, I was like why my my music should have kit as the number one focus mm. and um, I wanted, and you know, like my first album about us, I made majority of it in my bedroom. Yeah. Um, I didn't have, you know, a good set of mics or anything. Very, very raw. Like that's what it really yeah. was. It was just like whatever you woke up that morning feeling mm. like that's what ended up being that song. Yeah. The, the first album was very raw and like, I was just learning how to produce. So it was like very simple kind of production, but me using all you know, preset sounds on Logic and then adding <laughs> like lo-fi drums with a couple of mics over my drum kit in my bedroom. So um, definitely now with my new album, um, the direction I wanted was it's drums to the front and drums is like recording live kit, me playing everything. Me, I played all the percussion on it. I played a lot of the guitars on it and um, there's some harmonica I played and some glockenspiel <laughs> and piano. There's a lot of my keys on there. So, um, but I just like being tangible, like, mm. and using my hands and, you know, the first album made majority of it in my bedroom. This album made, uh, majority of it in my house in LA. So, um, I just like being surrounded by instruments and gear and being able to try different things. Yeah. 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 And I, I feel like you also you let your voice just go 
with this album. I feel like whatever yeah. felt like coming out happened. And to me, like that was exciting to hear throughout every single track. Worst Person Alive is like my favorite off this oh. record. Like I cannot it's stop my favorite putting too. it on blast. Like <laughs> it is so good just because I feel like you really just went all in like vocal gymnastics, like through the roof. Um, what was yeah. that process for you during uh, this song, but also this this album as as far as your vocals go? Because you mentioned like you weren't, you didn't think you can sing, but like yeah, when I've you never listen had to a this, lesson you sound still. amazing. <laughs> I definitely need to get a lesson. I I don't say that trying to brag like I'm probably doing damage because I probably need probably, to. Yeah, probably the damage part, I would agree, like maybe. Yeah. But like as far as like sounding good, you yeah. sound amazing on this oh, record. I think like just from my first songs that I released, you can definitely hear the difference in my voice. I've mm. just learned how to use my voice because I became like a professional singer. So I was singing all the time and I go on YouTube and I do my little warm-ups <laughs> and I go through scales and stuff. So I think just over time I've learned how to use my instrument, my voice, um, you know, better and better and stronger yeah. and stronger. Um, and then, you know, for a lot of the songs on this record, I just experimented with pushing it as hard as I can and seeing what happens. Like There's how no long, fear. how long can I hold this note? <laughs> how like, you know, especially with the worst person alive, I was trying different mouth shapes. So like when I'm doing those really big notes, now I'm the worst person alive. No, and those I'm are my favorite. Yeah. Alive. There's a lot of like low end in that belt and some other belts I do, like I realized that changing the shape of your jaw and mouth makes it sound different. So, um, yeah, that, that song, it feels like there's a lot of chest and power in it when I go for it in the, in that song, but I had a lot of fun making that song and, um, it came together pretty quickly and was a really late addition to the album as well. Yeah, I'm glad it made it to the album. <laughs> yeah, I'm stoked. We, I couldn't find that chorus for yeah. so long and it ended up being, I wrote a few verse ideas for another song on the album called Good Enough and then one of those um, verse ideas ended up being the chorus of The Man. Worst Person Alive. So. Yeah, and, and and Good Enough, you had, I, feel, I, I think that's the song that you had like this long belt as well um, or, yeah. was, or was that rough? Uh, rough, there's some like gospel sounding vocal, like textures, a lot of layers. Mm. Good enough, I scream. It That's starts, what it was, yeah. Yeah, it starts off like a ballad, just me and piano. And then you jump to the end of the song and we've just gone fully up the ramp. It's gone to the other end and I'm <laughs> fully like, almost like screamo screaming. Yeah. Like fully just like crazy, like you can see the veins coming out of my <laughs> neck vibe. Um. So, yeah, that was another one where that probably cooks my vocals a little bit, but um, it sounded cool on the record, so I went for it. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And I love the fact that you worked with Colin Britton, such an incredible producer, uh, probably one of my favorite right now because he's, like, working with so many different genres and mm. a lot of genres that I grew up listening to as well. But, like, I feel like he allows you to be a different human being when it comes to like recording vocals or even like producing as well, which you co-produce with him also. So how would you say that like Colin helped you step out of comfort during these sessions? And like, how do you feel that he also helped you become a better producer? Yeah. Colin's awesome. He actually only did like ad production. So just added oh, nice. some extra Colin flavor yeah. to the end of the song. So we didn't actually start the songs together. Um, but I took a few songs that I just felt like needed a little bit of extra sauce. Mm -hmm. And what I love about Colin is he's a drummer. So um, we get along drum wise. <laughs> so, you know, for the drums on Rough, I wanted it to really, you know, my whole vibe with Rough was that song was going to be the drum song when we play mm -hmm. live where it's everyone on stage playing toms. So, so me and Colin went into the studio and um, – it was literally just like watching two kids, like just having the best day of their life. Like we just set up toms everywhere and we're just like smashing through <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, Colin's great. He's such a great hang in. Um, his ad prod on some of those songs just like just tipped it to the right edge that it needed to go to just to just to make it uh, feel full and just yeah. feel, you know, sonically great. And he's also just got such good ear and he added a few like, 
extra guitar parts here and there that yeah. just like just made it feel a little bit more full and were you know a little bit more creative um so yeah he's great aside from like vocals uh, which song would you say that really challenged you on this album aside from vocals what challenged me um probably good enough was a song i had for a very long time and i couldn't get the verses and i wrote so many different verses and there's so many different versions of that song there's a ballad version there's like a more pop version Ooh. there's you know so there's was so many different versions and then um me and Aiden who I co-produced most of the album with we just tried so many different versions and then we just felt like starting it with a ballad and then going to the absolute opposite end of the scale was the way to go and then real life real life I've had that song since like 20 18 mm. and me and Aiden made so many different versions of it like just tried everything and normally it would start with me like drumming or beatboxing a different groove and mm. then we'd just build it from there <laughs> um but yeah probably those two songs were the the hardest ones to crack <laughs> there's always songs that are harder to crack yeah. and I'm such a perfectionist so if it's not exactly how I kind of want it to be. I, I'll be really hard on myself. There's a lot of good songs that didn't make the album just because I couldn't get them to me absolutely like loving it and being obsessed with it. It yeah. was just kind of didn't hit the mark for They'll me. eventually see the light of day. Yeah, maybe. There's <laughs> there's quite a few in the vault, which is cute. How did this album help you become a better producer? Um, I think I just learned to trust my ear a little bit more. Mm. Um. I feel like, yeah, I just trust my gut and, you know, trust my perfectionism, like just went with it. If I didn't think it was good enough, like then it just wasn't. We had to keep trying things and right. we tried so many different versions of every song and, you know, tried so many different textures like, you know, I'd add in a just for experimenting something, add in a harmonica part. And then I'm like, no, it's not a harmonica. Maybe it's like a saxophone. So then I'd get a friend in and I'd like sing melodies that I'd want him mm. to play on saxophone. And then we'd add that and then it'd be like, oh, you know, that's not right. And then we'd try something else that was in that kind of like brassy kind of world, like just trusting my ear and just adding everything and pulling it out and muting things and, you know, adding keys and does it actually need keys and making sure like – everything in the production serves a purpose, mm. you know, like building everything and having that many, you know, lines of production that they're not even needed in there and you even have them so low in the mix. There's no purpose for it. I think there's beauty in production when there's space and clarity and being able to hear each production line. And then also I really wanted to make sure there was no loops. So it's, you know, me and Aiden like playing everything yeah. or my housemate Fern Tree, who's an amazing guitarist, him, you know, adding guitars. I really wanted to make sure that every part of the production was, you know, no loops. It was like us getting our hands dirty and playing every single instrument. And um, I think it just, you know, that's the music that I grew up listening to and loving and I just love instruments. And I grew up playing in orchestras and I went to – music uni and studied music so I've just been so used to being around instrumentalists and players yeah. and stuff so I just like playing instruments <laughs> it's, and it, it's awesome that now it's not just like oh let's add this kind of sample it's like let me call someone see if this works out yeah. like that must feel amazing like that full circle moment of like now you're actually having musicians in the room like now you're playing every instrument that you possibly can yeah. instead of just like getting these kinds of loops that you see online or whatever like which that's amazing like session musicians and just musicians in general they just come up with you know so much more creative ideas than a loop and then you can also nothing against loops also people make absolute hits from loops. absolutely um and then a lot of session players make their own loops and yeah. um but there's nothing like having an actual player in the room and then experimenting and throwing ideas in them and bouncing back and you know we had a lot of chats when I had some of my mates come in who were session players and it was like isn't it crazy that like drums brought me here <laughs> and maybe saxophone brought you here and we're in this room together and we've had this whole journey yeah. and this whole life with this instrument 
it's taken us around the world and made us meet so many different people and now we're here together. Like just insurance <laughs> is so cool like that. They take people on crazy journeys. They do. They do. And I yeah. love that, you know, back we're, we're back here, like North American headline run. Like I said earlier, most of these are sold out. You have two incredible artists that, that are on this tour. Like what is it about them that you felt were, was the right fit for this tour and for you? Oh, for support acts? Yeah. Oh, Mickey. Well, Mickey's a good friend of mine. Mickey has been uh, in my music video for Waste of Space. Mm. And also I've met Mickey before um, as they've toured with my friend Lauren Sanderson. Yes. And um, they just have the best, like, voice. There's so much, like, clearness and clarity to their voice. It's like... <laughs> It's like, whoa, that is not edited. That's your real, <laughs> That's real. vocal. <laughs> um, so they're just amazing and, um, you know, it's great to have them on, on the road and they're such just a good vibe and a good hang as well. So yeah. it's nice to have like good um, spirited people and like positive people on the road because you got to live with these mother****. <laughs> you got to live. quite some time right now. <laughs> you got to live and see these every day and you do everything <laughs> together and you hang out and you see each other every day so <laughs> you get really close so it's good to have like fun nice people around yeah well i'm excited for you i'm excited to like i get excited every time i see something new with you just because oh, geez, you know from that very first interview we had you you've had the biggest smile from start to finish and you continue to carry yeah. that smile every time you talk about music but every time we talk as well and that's oh, really thanks, awesome man. so uh, congratulations with Cheers, the success of this album, this tour, and I'm looking forward to watching you continue to grow and becoming a household name. Oh, thank you so, so much, mate. It's always a pleasure to chat to you. Thanks so much, G. Awesome. You guys, be sure to check out G Flip on tour now. New album, Drummer, is out now, and thanks for watching here on Front Row Live. Woo!